Hello everyone, Treeks here and welcome to the second weekend of me playing Game & Watch Gallery. Should be the final weekend. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna go back into the games to try to unlock everything in the gallery on easy mode. I might try to do that. But officially, this is going to be the final weekend because we only have two more games to cover. First one today, Octopus, and tomorrow will be Oil Panic. Octopus is the big unknown for me, at least it used to be. It became uh, Mr. Game Watch Final Smash and Super Smash Bros. So, <laughs> but back in the day when I first played this game, Game Watch Gallery, this was actually the only one I never heard of. So, but now of course I do know it. It is um, the least hectic of the games, I think, but also my least favorite one. But because of it being the least hectic, I'm pretty sure getting a high score should be relatively easy on this one. Speaking of easy, we're playing on hard, of course. <laughs> but classic first. Let's go show off how this game used to look at first. This is the deal. As you can see, we have um, three men in a boat. We control the leftmost one in order to get some treasure, which you see at the bottom right corner, and a giant octopus with his tentacles trying to stop us. If we get touched, we lose a life. That is how you miss in this game. And as you can see, we can actually grab more than one of the jewels in the chest, you might say. <laughs> the more you get, the more points you will score, as you can see. However, you will get slower the moment um, you actually fill your bag with too much jewels. Or whatever is in that chest. <laughs> it's loot, anyway. And that is what we're gathering here. The trick here is to look at the rightmost tentacle. Because that is the one that is uh, able to touch you the moment you are at the chest, gathering your loot. But also take a look at the tentacle to the left of that, because if you try to um, escape from the rightmost tentacle that is trying to knock you out the moment you are filling your treasure, your way out can also kill you, of course. <laughs> so um, the two rightmost tentacles definitely are the ones you need to um, pay attention to. The two leftmost tentacles are only there to um, hinder your way towards the chest. But also, also don't underestimate those two, because those can also... Oh, uh, yeah, this is what I mean. <laughs> I did see the rightmost tentacles about to approach me, but uh, the, the one to the left of that was also extended, and therefore I didn't have a way out anymore. <laughs> so the strategy in this game definitely is... Um, trickier than you might think at first. But still, I still feel like um, this is the game where you can score pretty high the easiest. Because unlike uh, the two previous games that we've played, Manhole and Fire, this one does not really have the tendency to become super hectic like those do. This is a game that does not become very crowded. Because it not, does not use um, quote unquote other people to score points. The only thing that really happens here is the fact that the tentacles become faster and actually uh, lose their pattern a little bit. Because, um, as you can see, if it wasn't obvious yet, the tentacles aren't always in the same pattern. The right one and the uh, one to the left of that don't always go at the same speed. Otherwise it would be too easy, of course. It would just be a matter of learning the pattern and uh, you would have a very easy way of finding a method of getting to the chest and also a way out again. So the speed the tentacles move in is definitely uh, variable. They aren't always the same. So you have to keep paying attention here. But other than um, the speed the tentacles move at and the um, way they vary their speed, that's pretty much the only thing this game can do to make it harder. So the moment you have um, a good pace for this game, it shouldn't be able to surprise you anymore. And therefore scoring your 800 points, which is required to um, unlock both of the galleries that are attached for this game, should be easier than the other three games. Because I can already give away Oil Panic is more like Fire and Manhole was. And that one can get pretty hectic. When it comes to the uh, uncontrollable chaos that some of these Game Watch games can become, this one definitely is the most tame. But of course, it does not make it easy. 
I'm not even at 200 yet, which uh, would give me my first star. And I already have my first miss, so I should not count my blessings too soon. At least I'm passing my score on manhole, it seems. I wasn't able to um, get 200 points there. I should be able to do it here. I believe 177 was my uh, score on classic manhole. Six, seven, yeah. Okay, let's go back. The good thing about uh, racking up score in Octopus is the fact that you don't only get points for collecting treasure, as you can see here. Every single thing I grab gives me a point. But also if you return into the boat. As you can see, if I grab two things, returning to the boat will actually give me points for that as well. And that's the whole reason why I feel... Um, Oh yeah, of course, 200 points, so extra 1-up. In this case, um, depicted as an extra diver. <laughs> because that's basically the story behind um, this game. As you can see, we have a sunken ship at the bottom right. And that is where this treasure chest is coming from. And we are salvagers. We want this treasure. There's an octopus who took over. That's the reason why he's trying to grab us. This octopus is thinking, this is my home, you people can go screw yourself. <laughs> However, we have three men with us, so every single time one of these gets grabbed and eaten by the octopus, we have two more people to um, try to grab the treasure. And that's also how the one-ups work in this minigame. The moment we run out of divers, then the game is over. And of course, for every 200 points, we get an extra 1-up. As long as you can carry it, because there's never going to appear a fourth diver in the boat. <laughs> Three is the maximum. Oh. My own fault. Yeah, because of the way these um, old Game & Watch games work, they aren't really uh, 60 frames per second, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Sometimes it's kind of hard to um, see whenever the frame is in such a way that you are actually um, going to get a miss in the moment you touch something. And that wasn't fair, there was no way out. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I can say about a situation like that is um, the moment you see that both of the two rightmost tentacles are going to extend and therefore you don't really have a way out the moment the rightmost tentacle is about to grab you you should be leaving earlier but that is in all honesty really hard to see kind of like this as you can see both of them were coming out pretty much at the same time in a situation like that you're going to want to leave earlier because otherwise there's not going to be a way out for you now that is definitely the most hard to see because usually i'm so busy trying to collect treasure that i only have eye for the rightmost tentacle and therefore, don't really have the luxury of also trying to look for to the one to the left of that. And that's usually what gets me in this game. Okay, I'm pretty sure we're not going to see a four star finish for this one. I might get my second star and therefore still unlock at least one of the gallery panels. But with only one diver, I seriously doubt I'm going to get to 800 points here. <laughs> we'll see how far I can get. That's my general idea for the coverage of this game. Just see how far I can get. If that happens to be uh, 177 points, like a manhole. <laughs> or 900 points. In the modern variant of uh, manhole. <laughs> Does not matter to me. As long as I have one run through all of these games. For both classic and modern. It doesn't really matter how far I get. I can always come back next weekend to play it on easy to unlock the rest. In that situation I'll just uh, show off my uh, finish. I won't show off the entire thing anymore like I'm doing now. Show off the entire mini game. But at least 400 points is coming near. Okay. 
Okay, one more trip should be enough. Just like with the other games, this does become faster the moment you get closer to your next 100 mark. It's not as bad as the other games, like I said, because of not being as hectic, it's not going to be uh, very crowded. In a game like this, it could be depicted uh, by um, more tentacles, that's something they could have done. I think it would have been a little bit too difficult to actually uh, make that on a system like this. Okay, there we go. It's <laughs> trying to tell a story again. Uh, distraction uh, came over me. <laughs> but it does not matter. I'm uh, pretty sure I wouldn't have been able to um, score 800 points anyway. So we, at least we see Helmet, which is a game that released in 1981. One of the earlier ones ever made. Part of the Gold series. Get into the house without being hit by falling tools. Also a Super Smash Bros. stage. <laughs> in fact, this was the very first Super Smash Bros. stage. And also a mini game we will see once the Let's Play of Game Watch Gallery 2 becomes a thing. Because this Game Watch is actually part of that. But what is part of the first Game Watch game is Octopus and we're not done playing that. <laughs> we still need to see how Mario and his gang actually handle a giant octopus while collecting treasure. Because of course that is also a thing. Okay, looks pretty similar, as you might expect. It's uh, the same game officially, so... <laughs> and this is how it works here. You might be able to see it already by the layout of the, this octopus. One major difference in comparison to the classical variant of octopus is the fact that tentacles don't always extend to the same location, as you can see. Especially when looking at the third tentacle from the left. As you can see, it tracks diag diagonally now, and now vertically. Proving that um, these tentacles are much more difficult to actually keep track of. Some of these tentacles are actually able to extend to different locations. And another new feature that this modern variant has is the fact that you can actually throw your treasure at a tentacle. So it actually stuns for a moment, as you can see. The third one actually... Um, Stayed put for a while until the stun wears off. So even though the tentacles have um, more range, they can actually extend to more locations. You also have an extra weapon. You can actually throw your treasure instead of bringing it back to Peach, who is actually waiting for us at the boat, as you can see. I'm going to assume this is Mario's attempt of uh, conquering Peach's heart by just handing her out the treasure with uh, danger of his own life. <laughs> But still, that's the biggest difference when comparing the modern variant to the classical one. The octopus has more weapons because he has more range in his tentacles. But we have a way to actually stun those tentacles by throwing our treasure at it. Like this. <laughs> But of course, the moment you do that, you cannot return it to the boat anymore. Only if you actually have something in your bag, you can actually score points by returning to the boat. So it's definitely still recommended to do it. Officially, you don't have to. You can just uh, keep on scoring points in this mini game if you never return to the boat. You can just keep on plundering this chest to get more and more points. Of course, it will get slower because the heavier this bag becomes. Eventually, also the grabbing will get slower, but I'm pretty sure there's no official limit to it. You can just infinitely fill your bag and never return to the boat. But of course it does become harder to score up, uh, or to rack up points this way. I still feel the most optimal... Oh, I'm really heavy now. <laughs> yeah, it does prove my point a little bit. The more filled your bag is... You are able to score much more points, of course, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you become very slow. <laughs> and therefore you uh, run a much bigger chance of uh, being grabbed by a tentacle. And that's something even Mario does not want. Okay, almost at our first star. And therefore, being on par with fire... Go away! <laughs> because on fire I also... 
scored three stars in both games. In this one I also have three already. Not that I didn't expect to, because like, uh, yeah, couldn't quite go anywhere here. <laughs> Just like with the classical variant, even in the modern one, I usually end up getting grabbed because of the same reason. Me being busy grabbing treasure, and both of the tentacles extending at the same time, so I don't have enough room to escape. <laughs> even on modern, that is what usually gets me. Oh, okay, was well, in time luckily this time. <laughs> But it did almost happen again. But anyway, I do still feel like this is the most optimal way to um, score points quickly. Just keep on filling your bag until the rightmost tentacle forces you out of there and then return to the ship. Get the extra 10 points from that. Unless you only have two coins in your bag, or jewels, or whatever it is. <laughs> then I'd usually like to stay around, but uh, most of the time... Whenever I'm forced away from the chest, I first return to the boat, and then return to the chest. Like this. Both on Modern and Classic, I feel this is the most optimal way to um, quickly score points. Even though you don't officially have to, like I said. You can officially just stay around the chest and stay there forever. As long as you don't get grabbed. You can also just score your points that way. Oh. Oh. <laughs> also be careful to um, use your D-pad correctly. One thing I have not addressed yet is the fact that this actually controls pretty weirdly. You might expect whenever you're at the bottom of the sea that you actually move left and right. And the moment you um, are at your rope and return to your boat, then you're actually moving up and down. But don't think the controls work like that. Even on your controls you always press either left or up to return, or down or right to actually advance. And that is how it works. So if you're climbing the rope, you can actually still press left and you will also go up. Same deal here. I'm at the bottom now. The moment I return, I can also press up to return. That's basically how the controls work here. There's only a return and advance option and you can use two of the directions on the D-pads to actually use them. So the moment I'm moving over the bottom of the sea, I don't have to press left, or when I'm moving up the rope, I don't have to press up. The other control also still works. But it does not take away the fact that it can get confusing sometimes. The moment I actually uh, leave the bottom of the sea and start climbing, sometimes I do still have the tendency to actually switch my controls, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Because I am pressing left the moment I'm at the bottom of the sea, and I press up the moment I want to climb my rope, but I officially don't have to. <laughs> and that does sometimes trip me up. Okay, here comes an extra life, in the form of a two in this game. Let's make sure I'm safe, and there we go. Okay, we're doing fine so far past 500 points and not a single miss yet. Officially I did have one, but that one got cancelled. <laughs> Luckily this is a game where you can easily grab your 1-up. Because as you can see, Lekitu simply throws it to the bottom of the sea and it actually keeps lying around there. Okay, there used to be a time when I didn't have any misses. <laughs> Still, 800 points should be doable here. It does not feel too difficult. Maybe I can even go for 1000 points if I'm uh, daring. <laughs> Actually, 
actually getting all five of the stars for this game. That's something I'm officially not going for. It would be nice if there's at least one game where I can actually do that. Reaching the maximum score in these games. We should actually unlock the super hard mode, I'm pretty sure. I've not been able to do that a whole lot in these Game Awards Gallery games. Unlocking super hard on uh, these games. And I'm pretty sure for that you actually need to reach the maximum score of 1000 points. Getting all five stars. If you're able to do that, you actually unlock super hard. An even harder variant of these games. Which I'm pretty sure the only difference between hard and super hard is uh, the speed. And super hard it goes incredibly fast. Insanely fast. <laughs> Other than that, it's the same as, re uh, as regular heart. Oh, he gets an extra weapon now. <laughs> Completely forgot about that. And apparently, that's also something you can do. You can also shoot ink at us. I'm pretty sure it's a very rare weapon. You don't see him uh, do that a whole lot, but it is definitely a weapon he can use. <laughs> as you just saw happen. It seems he's already tired of that. <laughs> I'm not too sure what actually triggers that, because it's so rare that um, I actually have a hunch that there's something you need to do in order to trigger that. But I'm not too sure how that works. Okay, here's 700, and we get another 1-up. So that 800 should be in the bag. Okay, thank you. And I just realized I made a bag joke. <laughs> While I'm busy filling a bag of myself. Oh, help. Oh. <laughs> I was able to fend off one of the tentacles. <laughs> but yeah, the moment you use your throw move, your bag is empty. So don't think you can use it twice. Go away with your stupid ink. <laughs> don't think that if you've um, filled your bag with... Oh, come on. Okay, I need to concentrate here. I was trying to tell a story about how you only have one throw move at a time, but... Apparently I'm not allowed to talk about that. Because I'm starting to screw up all of a sudden. So close to the finish, I don't want to fail this. Oh. Okay, panic mode is starting with me now. <laughs> I don't want to land in a situation where I see my score at the end is going to be 7.99 or something like that. <laughs> okay, one more trip. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, I should be safe now. <laughs> At least I have 800 now. I can still try to go for 1000. Oh no. <laughs> Stay away from me. <laughs> Okay, I'm calmed down a little bit. Luckily, at least I have 800. The 1000 I don't necessarily have to do. Would be nice, but at least my primary goal is already reached, so... Don't have to panic all too much. Anyway. Hey, more help! Help! <laughs> the ink got to me. <laughs> well, there's a weapon I didn't expect... Uh to get killed by. <laughs> but okay, uh, unfortunately we weren't able to um, reach 1000 points, but at least we got 800, so at least the gallery corner gets two more panels. The first one is another game that actually appears in Game Wars Gallery 2. <laughs> As if they were inspired. But at least we have Vermin, the third game to ever release in 1980, where we hit moles as they pop up. You can see a little bit how it works here. Speaks for itself. 
We'll be seeing more of it in Gamer Rush Gallery 2. <laughs> and the second one... You guessed it. Also going to be in Game Wars Gallery 2. <laughs> we have Chef. 1981. Part of the widescreen series where we catch food with a frying pan. Comparable to um, Fire, as you can see, where we also bounce up um, objects, if you can call people objects. <laughs> but anyway, a little glimpse of Game Wars Gallery 2 is what we received, apparently. <laughs> but other than that, time is up. We are far over time, but at least... We were uh, somewhat successful today. See you tomorrow for the final game, Oil Panic. Thanks for watching, and Treeks out. <laughs>